I'm Larry Walther and this is PrinciplesOfAccounting.com Chapter 2. In this module we will be discussing computerized processing systems. Computerized processing systems present an attempt to simplify and automate data entry and processing. They divide accounting processes oftentimes into unique or distinct modules relating to particular functional areas. For example, there might be a module that relates to the sales function where someone would at the data entry terminal enter information about sales transactions that would be converted into what would appear to be journal entries that can then be processed into financial statements. Or in more sophisticated systems it may be that uh, a terminal at a store, a checkout terminal or a scanner would also be the interface to the computer system so that, so that as customers bought goods the particular transaction, say it was a sale on account, would be completely processed and entered into the accounting system. Obviously that would do away with the need for someone to additionally enter the transaction into the accounting record. These systems should be user friendly and very intuitive. There's an attempt to minimize keystrokes. There's things like pick lists in the software, automated call up functions, autocomplete functions and so on that are very much a part of the computerized processing system. Most of them are built on a database logic set so although they may appear to be debit credit based, it's probably not really maintaining the records in a debit credit form. Instead, it's captured and housed in a database of information. The transaction data can therefore be sorted and processed based on any particular query structure. For example, give me the sales between October 4th and October 7th, some particular uh, uh, query such as that. It's very likely the system will provide up-to-date data that can be assessed by a business decision makers on a real-time basis. The idea that you would post at the end of a month may be replaced by a real-time posting of information as the, as the account balances are updated within the database. Uh, they can be used to produce numerous specialized reports in addition to the key financial statements that we customarily think of in an accounting system. Uh, computerized systems, uh, they range a lot in complexity. Uh, there's very simple systems that are very appropriate for small businesses that might cost just a few hundred dollars. Uh, oftentimes they'll, you'll move up though into five and ten thousand dollar type systems that are industry specific that help produce invoices and track inventory and things like this for a particular industry or group. And then there's the very advanced uh, enterprise resource packages that go well beyond just the accounting function and a business may invest uh, millions and millions of dollars in a very large uh, ERP type system. Uh, however, whatever type system you're referring to, it's imperative that the basic accounting structure still be understood. And that's why uh, some students may feel like I don't really need to learn debits and credits and preparing financial statements. Yet I assure you, understanding those in their, ma in their manual context is essential for being able to properly implement and use a ma uh, an automated accounting system. Here's an example of a screenshot from a typical accounting software type package. This is a journal entry type screenshot. It's for a particular utility bill that was received for the month. The entry number is automated. It sequences as each new transaction is about to be entered. It automatically assigns a sequence number to the transaction. The entry date, uh, the date of the transaction is probably automated to the accounting system with perhaps an override function. But ordinarily you'll notice the account number list might be a pick list. When you click on that, a listing of account numbers would drop down and you would select the appropriate account number and automatically up would pop the account name, you would enter an amount, it might automatically enter an offsetting amount for the logically corresponding account, you would have an opportunity to override that if it was not the right amount, but before you could post this or before the computer would accept the transaction, it would be imperative that the entry be in balance and so there would be some sort of checkbox to indicate that the item is entered appropriately and finally there would be some sort of button to click or return key to go ahead and indicate you're happy with the entry and ready to enter it into the accounting system. And now in closing this discussion on computerized processing systems, it's very important to consider in your own business so that you think about uh, how important it is to maintain control over this system. With a manual system it's fairly easy to look at it and see if there's been alterations or unauthorized entries into the system. In a computerized system it's very important to have appropriately authorized personnel with password protection to make sure that all transactions that are entered into the system are appropriate. Uh, it's just simply harder to look back into an electronic database and find things that are not appropriate or, or were entered incorrectly. So uh, while they have the beauty of uh, simplifying the accounting process, they also pose unique control risk to the organization.